like you. You're just a big fat panda. I'm not a big fat panda. I'm the big fat panda. The whooshy finger. Oh, you know this hold. You're bluffing. You're bluffing. Shifu didn't teach you that. Nope. I figured it out. Skadoosh. Kung Fu Panda 4 is the latest installment in the hit franchise developed by DreamWorks Animation. And in this film, we follow Poe, once again voiced by Jack Black, as he is tasked with selecting his successor, aka the new Dragon Warrior. But behind the scenes, a new villain called the Chameleon is causing trouble as she seeks to take over China. So Poe meets up with a brand new character called Zen, who is voiced by Aquafina, who is a local thief. And together, they must take down the Chameleon, but also along the way, Poe must face the villains from his past. That's all I'm gonna say without spoiling anything, but Kung Fu Panda 4, this is gonna going to be an interesting one because there's a lot of people that have been talking about this movie as of recently and more or less how this movie is the worst in the franchise. It's the weakest in the franchise. I don't think I've heard a single person talk about how much they enjoy this movie over something like two or three. But before I get really into my opinion about it, I think the best thing to do is cover what I think of the first three movies and pretty simply, I have nothing but good things to say about them. The first two Kung Fu Panda movies are some of my favorite childhood movies of all time. I used to watch those a lot as a kid. That was kind of like the main DreamWorks franchise that I was big into besides like How to Train Your Dragon and besides like Disney stuff which I watched a lot of the time. Kung Fu Panda was by far up there. I loved those movies and the first two I think are absolutely amazing. I think there's something just really special about those movies that not only makes them for kids but for adults alike. They have a lot of really good messages in them and the third one I also think is really good even though it's not as good as the other one I still think it's like pretty much on par or even just slightly like below it. So when this movie got announced, I was pretty excited because honestly, considering that none of them have been bad before, I kind of had a lot of hope that, you know, this movie's probably going to be really good, going to be at least decent. Like, I didn't see this movie being, like, the worst thing ever or anything, or at least I hope not. Like, can you imagine if this movie was absolutely terrible? I couldn't, honestly. I think it would be weird. So when I started to hear this movie was getting, honestly, kind of mixed reviews, and a lot of people were kind of on the fence about it. So just hearing that information, I did get a bit scared walking into my screening. I was kind of nervous of how I would like it, if I was going to hate this movie or absolutely love this, because I am a big-time, long-term uh, Kung Fu Panda fan. And honestly, stepping out of the movie, I still thought it was a good movie, but it's definitely not as good as the first one, and I'm going to get into why it's not as good as those first three movies, but there's still some good stuff in here which I do want to cover just really quickly. And just getting into those really quick little things, the animation in this movie is still really good. I did notice they kind of almost like soften the textures a little bit. I think it was just done to be like a stylistic choice because honestly, I feel like they take away some of the texture in this movie and put it into other aspects of the animation. Like there's a lot of like really cool like flashes of color in this movie where there are certain fight sequences where they'll like flash or like the screen will cut and it'll show two characters faces so I honestly wasn't like that upset or anything the animation was like slightly worse it really was just nothing to complain about in my opinion and I don't think it's that big of a deal at all and also I just really like the main cast in here Jack Black as Poe once again was just great he's charismatic and he's very very charming and very funny and he still has that energy in this movie like he did all the other movies which didn't shock me at all but I honestly think my favorite thing about this movie was the action and the action sequences. All the action in all the movies is really good, but this one especially, I found it to be actually a lot more creative than the other films. Like, I really think they took a lot of liberties with, like, certain camera angles and certain ways they wanted to, like, edit sequences together. And it honestly made for a really refreshing time. Like, there was a lot of really unique fight sequences that I really, really liked. There's one at the beginning close where Poe has to fight, like, this manta ray. And it's really short, but it is really cool. And then there's like other sequences throughout the movie like there's one where he's like covered in fog and you're like seeing silhouettes of him like fight all these baddies and it's really cool like there's just a lot of really cool little stuff and also a lot of really cool stuff when it comes to the villain who shapeshifts into all these different villains all these different characters from the other movies and those scenes are really really good as well they're super fun very energetic and kept me entertained the entire movie if you take one thing out of this review I just want to let people know is that I thought this movie was really entertaining and it was really fun like I did have a really good time with this movie but although unfortunately I still do have a lot of problems with this movie especially coming from what's come before I have a lot of little nitpicks
comics that I am going to talk about because I love these movies and I want them to do better. We're most likely going to get another trilogy, so just accept it. But before they go on and make another movie, they should take some of the criticisms we have as fans into account. But the first thing I really want to talk about in terms of big criticisms with this movie is 100% how they treat the villain in this movie. Which if you don't know who the villain of this movie is, it is a character called the Chameleon. She can change into different characters throughout Post Pass, like she turns into like Tai Lung, Shen, and Kai from the other movies. And I had really high expectations that this villain could be amazing because visually from the trailers, I was loving everything I was seeing with this character. The fight scenes with her were fantastic and the voice acting from Viola Davis was absolutely awesome as well. I thought she was actually really menacing, which a lot of people haven't said that, but I personally thought she worked really well in the movie. But my biggest issue with her character is that she really doesn't have that much depth especially compared to the other villains of the franchise, like Tai Long, Kai, and Shen. Like, she doesn't stack up pretty much at all, unfortunately. Like, they do try and give her a backstory in this movie, but the backstory is, like, really cliched and really just surface level. Like, just coming from a character point of view, she's honestly kind of awful. Like, she really has nothing going on. It was a really big disappointment in this movie, and while we're talking about the villains, I actually really want to talk about the other villains who were in the other movies who were brought back in this movie, because unfortunately, all of them are wasted in this movie. Tai Lung was the only character from the other movies that was a villain that was brought back that was actually given, like, lines in this movie, and listen, it's really cool to see that character come back. Like, it was very nostalgic. That's my favorite character in the Kung Fu Panda franchise. But there was just something about his return that really didn't make sense to me. And that simply comes down to the dialogue that he was given. This character does not feel anything like the character that we knew in Kung Fu Panda 1. Like, he is completely different. It was so weird. Like, half the things he was saying in the movie, I had to sit back and go, yeah, he would never say that. Like, the Tai Lung from the first movie would never say anything like that. It was so freaking weird. And the other characters, like Kai and Shen, were not even given voice lines. Like, they didn't talk once in this movie. It was such a weird and wasted opportunity, especially considering that that was the main marketing strategy was saying, hey, these villains are coming back. You should come see our movie to see them again. And two out of the three of them don't even talk. Like, I don't understand why they would pass up the opportunity to have some of these characters in interact. It was just such a weird thing to do. And another little thing that I want to talk about, there's no Furious 5 in this movie. And this was a big issue for a lot of people coming out because like a lot of people really connect with those characters from those first three movies and they are really good characters. They're very fun. They added a lot to this franchise. So when people thought that they weren't going to be in this movie, a lot of people saw red flags immediately. And to be honest, it wasn't a huge issue in like the movie itself because they do explain like where they've been gone and where they went. But like, it just seems weird to me because I could understand if they were just wanting to tell a different story without those characters and not really have to worry about it, which is very clearly what they were trying to do. But if it really did just come down to they didn't know what to do with those characters, I think it's actually really, really weird because I'm not gonna spoil anything. Like I don't wanna talk about any big plot points, but I for one could have seen a very easy way for them to include those characters in this movie. And before anyone says anything like Gavin, they are in the movie, they're in there for like literally 10 seconds and they do not say a single line. They don't say anything. They have no importance on the plot whatsoever, just so people knows. And it was a missed opportunity because I wanted to see those characters again. But I think by far the worst part about this movie and the biggest flaw about it is 110% how they set up this new character called Shen and Poe's relationship throughout the movie. Because the movie is very much about Poe trying to find a new successor. He's trying to find the next dragon warrior, which is the main plot point in this movie, and in the movie, I don't know if this is a spoiler, it's pretty damn obvious from the trailers, but Shen is set up to be the next dragon warrior in this movie, and I'm not going to confirm if that happens at the end or anything, but that relationship and that idea could work in this movie, like, it could work very well, because the character of Shen has a lot of parallels to Poe, like, from the first movie, and it was almost kind of clever what they were trying to do, but the execution was just way off. But before I really get into that execution, I want to talk about Shen as a character overall, because immediately out of the gate, this character had a lot of hate. If you don't know, this character was voiced by Aquafino, who is not a very popular actress right now, unfortunately. I never really got the hate, but she's been in a lot of things that people really 
really, really do not like a lot of really, really questionable roles that really have just kind of cemented her as the comic relief slash person that yells a lot with a really squeaky voice. Like, I'm not one of those people to hate. Like, I really don't think she's that bad, honestly. Everything I've seen her in, I think she's actually okay, besides, like, maybe The Little Mermaid, where she plays Scuttle, which was honestly... I hate to say it. <laughs> It was one of the worst performances I've ever seen. Remember the swamp? Remember my song in the swamp when I was like, wham, chicka, wham, wham, chicka, wham. I <laughs> Shut up! And she also voiced Sisu in Raya the Last Dragon, which, to be honest with you, I didn't like that movie at all. So I've only seen her in a couple of things that I actually don't like, but considering her character and her voice performance in this movie, I don't think it's that bad. Like, I really don't think that her character, including her voice and everything, is not bad at all. Because she's not made out to be the comedic character in the movie, she's more meant to be the more serious slash closed off one, and I thought she was okay. But the movie really does not take its time to set up Poe and Zen's relationship throughout the movie. It really feels like by the middle of the movie, they just speed run it. Like they just say, screw it, we need to get to the credits right now because everyone wants to leave for some reason. So the development between those two characters is not fully realized, and unfortunately it's not realistic at all, especially during certain moments that happen in the movie itself, it's like a complete 180. It's just like, well, why are you why are you acting like this after you just did this like five minutes ago? And it didn't feel developed at all. It felt incredibly rushed. And that was by far the biggest issue of the movie is that the plot didn't feel developed. So nothing else really felt like that groundbreaking about it. You didn't really have any good emotional moments because you had no idea what this character was like. And you also just didn't really care about this character and you didn't care about her relationship with Poe. So it just came off as flat and it just came off as a huge mess and I was honestly kind of dumbfounded by the end of the movie that it was just that rushed and it really seemed like they just didn't care that much. And it almost makes me feel like they really just wanted to get through this movie to get to five, which is very possible. Like five could be way better, but they still should have focused more time on this movie because it could have been really good. But unfortunately, nothing was developed enough and nothing was, I guess, fleshed out to a point where I actually cared throughout the movie. And it made the experience honestly just kind of meh. And that's why I'm going to give this movie a six point. 0.5 out of 10. But yeah, that was my opinion on Kung Fu Panda 4. This one was kind of a disappointing one for me, I'm not gonna lie. But I want to hear your opinions in the comments. Did you like this movie? Did you hate this movie? Write them all down in the comments, I would love to see them. But if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more content on the channel coming pretty damn soon. And I'm gonna see you on the next one. See ya.